All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It is Saturday night. It is time for the weekly dig here on Anime Archaeology. Uh -huh. um, new name. And uh, yeah, so we're here to talk about uh, all the latest happenings in the anime world. Spoiler alert, not a huge amount this week, but we'll get there. Um, we'll also be analyzing a movie of our choice, which we'll also get to here just very, uh, in, in, a, in a very few moments. But first, I wanted to say hi to everyone and uh, say hi to you all. How y'all doing today? In a surprising and, 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 and enjoyable day today. <clears throat> my, my routine was suddenly changed and yes. yeah. refreshing. Oh, glad to hear that. Yes. <laughs> when when travelers drop by and and go get to go do things and eat sushi and hang oh. out and go to the arcade, it's it's so, always a damn fine day. Travelers stop by. So did you talk to Paimon? And uh... yeah, <laughs> I did actually play. I I actually got it. I you know, I napped. <laughs> I napped this afternoon because mm -hmm. it was sushi and everything else. Oh, it's yeah. like and rain. The yeah, sound of falling yeah. rain. Um, but then I did get on to, uh, to Genshin for a little bit, mm -hmm. finish the daily quests, like whoop the butt out of a, uh, pyro regivine. Nice. Um, which just, I really enjoy sticking at a certain level and then just, mm -hmm. you know, weapon advancing mm -hmm. so that it's like, mm, okay, I might not be the most advanced in adventurer level, but holy cow, I pack a punch now. <laughs> <laughs> I can now kill you all. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And this is like, oh, that's really enjoyable. Mm. So. Cool. How you doing, Steve? Not too bad. I got my first uh, vaccine shot, Pfizer shot. Excellent. Get my second one in three weeks, so I'm happy about that. Uh, yeah. That much closer to... to um, not having to win the whole nine yards and they told me do not show it online so mm. just pretend here's the card right there sure. with all my stuff sure. um but uh, um let's see here beer detonate on me i was telling you guys oh, about that earlier mm -hmm. so it was covered in brown ale i smelled delicious good for mm. a little while it <laughs> <felt delicious. laughs> also smelled like the guy who's up over on on 31st street after three days but uh you know that's that's how it goes mm -hmm. but um nice um enjoyable weather for the past couple of days enjoyed it was out today and uh came back in and kind of looked it over some of the sweat i got at this little thing called on con oh con three cool glad to hear that so Apparently yeah they're... so that was a, that was fun that was a, that was a, that was fun you know cool yeah, yeah, my swag some, my swag arrived today Africa too for awesome. it, yeah 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 and 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 by the way for the who missed uh brent's cooking of cookies i i can attest that they are very good thank you very much very yes thank you. i, I want to know did any of them brent. arrive whole besides yeah. the uh egg cookie the egg cookie uh arrived whole which i was a little bit surprised about yeah. but um and that's <laughs> and that's actually we're, uh, we're gonna eat that last mm. um and I would say about a good two thirds actually made it whole. Wow! Made it in. I was, I was yeah. a little bit surprised. So I was like, "Wow! All right, so that, that, that's but yeah, it was amazing." Yeah. I was like, "I was expecting some crumbles, you know, mm -hmm. things like that." Yeah, sure. they did, did a good job. That's cool. Did you get and the so one that was filled with wasabi the, yet? See some of the stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I've got some taste back, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> the secret um, wasabi cookie. That, that, that's, ah. Uh, Alton Brown did a recipe. My, my oh, oh God, wasabi. Um, Alton Brown did a recipe of. Um, no, I was just gonna say. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Alton Brown. Alton Brown's always good. <laughs> um, he did a bunch of Halloween recipes and uh, um, you know, making your own things. And one was was popcorn balls. So making popcorn balls. And uh, when he was done okay. with all of them, he said, "Now, because I'm me." You know, and I believe that trick or treating should have actual tricks in them. Um, about one in ten, I'll put a little dollop of wasabi just right in the center oh. of that, and then just give it out to the kids. <laughs> Which, in this day and age, would get you arrested as like yes. some kind of terrible crime. You adulterated popcorn balls; they're handmade. <laughs> you want from me? It's not like I bought it at the store and then went and adulterated it then. God. Not that you can hand out popcorn balls any, anymore, anyway. <laughs> I'll get tossed immediately. So, yeah, actually, yeah, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. I didn't even thought of that. Yeah, yeah. 
I wow. actually came across a, there's yeah. a riff tracks of a short um, educational film from the 70s um, about Halloween safety that was advocating, yeah, to throw out anything that's not prepackaged, you know, you name it, just everything has to be oh. completely, you know, a prepackaged candy or, or bust. From the 70s? In the 70s, yeah, like late, late 70s. Was it, wasn't that the one where they showed the it the bloody mouth? Um, what? They did not show that. No, no, no. But it was they. They. Yeah. Um, they. Uh, no. They referenced that. You know. Unfortunately, sometimes adults will put things in candy that are bad for children. So you know. Which, by the way, for those curious, there was a. <coughs> there, there was a story. There, there was a story passed around that um, people would like insert razor blades into apples and so forth and thing. Never happened. There is no evidence needles whatsoever. And, yeah, yeah. Needles. Yeah, it's just. A, Complete urban myth. No evidence. Yeah. yeah. So. I think the worst I ever got, somebody obviously was not prepared, and I got cough drops. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, like, they were, they were like <laughs> Hall's lemon, like something or other. And they didn't say Hall's. They were, they were kind of clear. Okay, but yeah. the minute I ate it, I was like, wow. <laughs> that's um, My sinuses are clear, but I don't understand why. <laughs> this is a weird lemon drop. Yeah. yeah. I think the, I mean, the worst always is the the box of raisins. It's about six months old and it's all yeah. congealed into a, a, a dry lump. Like that's that's oh, just yeah. that's anti Halloween right there. But, oh well. Yeah, I was not a fan of apples though. I will be honest with you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Having gotten that's apples the, and oranges, you are like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get started then. Um, it is time, we are here to talk about a little movie called Paprika. Uh, this is, sadly, Satoshi Kon's final film. Uh, Kon had made a handful of films leading up to this point. Perfect Blue, Millennium Actress, uh, Tokyo Godfathers, um, and I may be missing one in there somewhere, uh, and Paprika, and then had done the TV series Paranoia Agent. Um, yep. And Paprika is actually a movie he'd been planning to do for a long time. Paprika is kind of one of those stories that was very formative for him and was very much kind of, oh, this is my story. It is based on a, on a um, I believe it's a, it's a, I believe it's a novel, like a relatively short novel, but like a novel novel. Um, that, that um, in fact, apparently when Perfect Blue came out, folks were like, have you heard of Paprika? And he's like, yes. Like, I, I know. Like, this, that's... We're in pre-production, shut <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Um, and so he'd been wanting to do it for a while, and just things happened, and he couldn't uh, do it. So he ended up um, being able to do Paprika, um, which I don't know. I mean, for me, there's a lot in Paprika that feels very much like it is the ultimate Satoshi Kon movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something to be said for that. <laughs> yeah, because um, like all the themes are here: your fantasy versus reality. Although in this case, it's not; it's yeah. dreams versus reality. Right. Um, and it's um, a, um, uh, you have that, that theme of a um, female protagonist who's kind of, um, has some kind of, I don't want to say trauma, but some, some kind of, you know, unusual perspective on, on, on things, um, who is uh, uh, dealing with that. And one of the things I find so interesting about Paprika is how it, like Perfect Blue, for example, starts so grounded. And then just very slowly starts getting weirder and weirder. And Paprika starts right there with you know, the, the circus and all the weird imagery and so forth. Um, Which is very grounded I, in a circusy kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I the the opening scenes, um, credit scenes into Paprika for me, um, once you get through the weird um, um, circus scene, mm is one of the best opening scenes I've, I've had, I, or I've ever seen. Um, mm. it's, it's one of my favorites, the way mm. that she flies around, flits around, and, you, and you're and you kind of told at this point that she can go from subconscious dream to things to just as she's moving around and <clears throat> she has the ability to do things. Like when she's stuck in traffic, she just snaps her finger and everything stops and she just skips on her merry way. Mm. Very much perfect bluey, by the yep. way. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like skipping around. I'm like, oh, geez, this again. 
Yeah. Ah, Sans, ah, boy. Sans attempted murder with a with an umbrella. <laughs> yeah, but still that mm -hmm. that fluidity of skipping along. Yeah. It's like, oh, jeez, we've seen what, this before, haven't we? And which I'm sure was was basically a callback. It was, yeah. Know, oh, hey, you remember that movie I did? We're doing that again, basically. Well, when we're looking at movie marquees mm -hmm. for uh, for uh, Detective Kanakawa, mm -hmm. um. One of the movie marquees mm -hmm. is Tokyo Godfathers. Oh, nice. Tokyo I'm, Godfathers. I'm, I'm yeah. sitting there and I'm like, why is that that marquee like it's very readable? It says Tokyo Godfathers. I'm like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, what are you doing here? Self promotion. Yeah. Well, the thing I also liked about, and I, I, it would be great to have seen kind of anything. And Brent, maybe you know, mm -hmm. but that initial opening circus scene. Mm -hmm. Because of the way that Konakawa, he's he's a cop, mm -hmm. but he also sort of has like spy thriller fantasy. Yeah. That initial additional uh, initial opening scene is really reminiscent of one of the James Bond films with Roger Moore, oh, where it's the Soviet circus. Russia with love. There okay. you go. Oh, and no, it's no, like no, all I could think of that is like the circus yeah. is happening, and I'm like, okay, he's running around. He's like, yes, he's here. I'm like, dude, this is like homage to <laughs> you know, like Ian Fleming. This yeah. is a Bond film. Yeah, all the way down to the point where you're like, ah, ah, don't strangle me in a train. I'm like, <laughs> isn't there a scene where Jaws? He's like yeah. trying to kill Roger right. Moore, James mm -hmm. Bond, on the train, and he's like trying yep. to punch him through the window, and it's just like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, I, I think you're absolutely right. And I don't know for a fact, but you're absolutely right that it, it is very, very much a James Bond sequence. Yeah. Um, and like, frighteningly close in a lot, in a lot <laughs> of the way that it's done. Where I'm like, damn. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and it, which again, I think is sort of a, a bit of a callback to Millennium Actress as well, uh, which is very much about you know an actress reliving her her career. Right. Um, so kind of you know combining both. Uh, uh, a filmic quality right to the scene right yeah totally um yeah uh, and what i also like about this is it allows us to sort of jump in um oh and also like the the whole uh, hallway scene remind me of the shining actually yep. um a little bit of that there but yeah there's um um what i like is that you you still don't know what's going on right like you, you know this is clearly like not fully reality but you're kind of waiting for that, okay, what is this? And I remember watching this and, and, and going, okay, I know what Satoshi Kon does. <laughs> you know, I, 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 yeah. I kind of know his, his point. And I was so relieved that then... Mess you know, with your mind. Yeah, exactly. I was so relieved that then, what, like four minutes in, we're introduced to the technology and what's going on. Right. Um, so it's like, oh, okay, good. It's not going to be weird fantasy stuff for two hours and then you finally figure it out. Um, which makes the film, in a sense, one of the more grounded Satoshi Kon works, uh, because you know that this is a a uh, you know when you are dealing with dream versus reality. Um, sometimes it's not obvious until things go weird, right? Yeah, but, I was going to say <laughs> you know that sort of. But yeah, uh, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think certainly by the time you hit the end of the film, where it's mm. just like, okay, Doctor Chiba, she her capabilities of mm -hmm. dealing with the sort of split between the dream reality and the real reality mm -hmm. and her ability to sort of flow through that yeah. and maintain sort of her own ego integrity. Yeah. You don't know what is going on, like whether she is appearing as herself and she is mm -hmm. maintaining her integrity in this insanity that's around her mm -hmm. or whether it's actual that's reality and where you know it's like damn it <laughs> start losing the threads of like what's real and not real in this film or <laughs> it's like ah. yep and she's paprika obviously that's dreamy time but mm -hmm. when she's not and there's still crazy things it's like okay yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> when the night parade starts happening and people in the public are like looking at it like huh what's that it's mm -hmm. like okay now now things are i don't know where i am now mm -hmm. yeah um, have, uh, have either of you seen Paranoia Agent? Out of curiosity, I've yes. seen a tad. Okay, I haven't right. seen. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it's a little dark for my usual yeah, watch. It's, uh, it's, it's, it, yeah, th th there's darkness in Paranoia. Yeah. yeah. Euro camp, non non fury, <laughs> paranoia agent. <laughs> Very discordant. <laughs> One of these things is not like the other. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, much less the. Uh, um, the, 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 the mm club. Um, that's a yeah. whole thing. Well, yeah, and it, I was waiting for you to. There's a oh, robot geez. chicken uh, a sketch that they do where mm. they do that song. Yep. And they've got all of these kids in panel, and mm. then one of them is just like slumped over. And it's like mm. one of these kids is not like the other. One of these kids is dead. Mm. It's like not not very European paranoid agent. <laughs> Bang right there. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and yet that show has such wonderful community to it. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's 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 the great thing about Stroshi Cohen. One of the great things is that. As we talked before about Paranoia Agent, is that so many of these works then become sort of weird, really nihilistic, and this has this this lovely heart to it. Um, right. But yeah, um, it's that also heart, that heart might be in the palm of your hand. You're clutching it, but yes. it's still got a lot of heart. Um, also remarkable for <laughs> you don't see a lot of uh, non-traditional body types in anime. Yes. Um, yeah, and the portrayal of a an obese man sympathetically in an anime film is quite remarkable. Well, it's also Although I mean, I it's do, an interesting. I, I'm not... well, all right, sir, Steve, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I, it's it, it it is one of the things where you know at first you chuckle at it, but then you kind of you know move on with it. But at the diner scene. Where she comes in and she goes, okay, the um, ramen? Yeah, he's talking and raises his hand. She sets in front of him. Um, the, uh, the beef? Uh, yeah. Steak set. Um, <laughs> the paella? I'm like, I'm like, dear Lord, in my big days, I couldn't even do that. I mean, I'm just like, God, mm -hmm. how? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. he's, he, he's, a, he's a big man. Um, what I was going to say is that the interesting part is the the way that he is mm -hmm. the tech genius mm -hmm. shut in style yeah and homura his assistant yeah. is also like the assistant genius shut in style that it's mm -hmm. like it's a non-traditional body type and certainly how the development between dr chiba and dr tokita of develops is far different than what you would expect mm -hmm. but for the different body style it is still within the, the corners of what you would consider to be like an outsider of society. Uh, yeah, yes, he's a right. genius, but right. he's still pegged in this mm -hmm. right. otaku kind of obsessive person mm -hmm. with his like of otaku styled things. And yeah. it's like, okay, so you present this difference, but package it kind of in a way that's like, okay, oh, this is this is so radically different. Not quite. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You know, it's it's. Um... I guess I should say it's it's remarkable for the for the fact that there is any sympathy for the yeah. character, you know, because um, I, I was waiting for him to be D D Dennis Nedry, basically, you right. know, all the way through, um, but he's uh, you know a uh, pretty sympathetic character, especially by the end, and presented very childlike, mm -hmm. which yeah. you know is endearing, but at the same time, it's like I I'm not this is post game play. Mm -hmm, just, you know sure, the, sure. the intent of the character is by the creator's mm -hmm. machinations and what they're doing with it but i would like to have seen a fully competent fully self-actualized yeah. big guy mm -hmm. who isn't a jerk who's not like some kind of like i you know i can destroy the entire world I, you know no same sympathetic character but fully possessed of his own authority yeah Rather than being like, huh, yeah, oh, oh, you know, he's a genius, but he's really just a, a kid inside a big man's body. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, mm yeah, I got you. You got to sell things sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't there, isn't there a manga or anime about um, uh, uh, a girl who falls in love with, like, a, a big guy? Uh, Mamoroto Marshma Marshmallow. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and he's yeah. he's an office worker. She's an office worker. And he's got like the Perry White kind of haircut, <laughs> kind of thing, like square to top, little mustache. Mm. And she keeps giving him like 
she comes in and like accidentally leaves a bag of marshmallows, his favorite food, on his desk, and there's like there's this very very cute. He's like in his mid forties, and she's yeah. like twenty something. Mm -hmm. So it's it is genuinely a very cute little show, and okay. so, yeah. I, I enjoyed the heck out of it. But yeah. yes, he was treated childlike, but he was a, he was her kind of like other department but superior so he'd been there he had knowledge he Senpai. was a good worker you know good office worker kind of guy so mm -hmm. it's like you didn't need to have the childlike obsession with marshmallows mm -hmm. but at least he got treatment as a person yeah and as a person in some authority yeah. which mm -hmm. was a bonus yep totally um it's also interesting to me how you can um really contrast the two elements of uh, of her personality of the you know the paprika versus the the real um uh so i talk a lot here about serious women's lane and one of the differences one of the th neat things that, that lane does is that whenever you see lane on the internet she is much less inhibited and she's much more talkative and so forth, because that's what, we, we, what we're like on the internet. Like, we're kind of pseudo-anonymous, so it's okay, and, and, and so forth. And you really feel that here, where when she's in the dream state, she can kind of throw it all off and just yeah. be kind of relaxed and so forth. Um, it's a version of herself that she, she feels she can do. And there's obviously a commentary there on kind of sort of Japanese um, professional woman norms. Uh, like, I, I read this, and I may be wrong, but the idea that a, a, a professional worker like this cannot be seen to be lighthearted and happy and so forth. Like, she has to look serious and look the part to be taken seriously. Which is a shame, but... Um, and then, of course, you have the Ghost in the Shell character, for some reason. Um, yeah. But he's so fun. Mm. Um, it was Oji San to Marshmallow. Oji San to that Marshmallow. Was, okay. yep. That was that was the that was the series. Sorry. Thank you. Yep. Um, well, it's just it, it, is, it is very interesting because she is so rigid. Mm -hmm. You know, she and, I, and I'm, I'm assuming that is obviously the intentional part. Her rigidity of character is the focused control she has that allows her without the DC mini. Yeah. to move into being paprika and then back out again. Mm -hmm. So it's like she's had enough, you know, acclimation to it as they discuss. Like once you get used to it, you kind of get an sort of adapted to that ability to travel in and out. Mm -hmm. And it's like obviously it's her force of character as Dr. Chiba mm -hmm. that allows her to keep her feet grounded in where reality is because yeah. holy cow, the way that she could switch in and out it would yeah. be very very difficult to be able to focus your conscious mind on what is reality at any given point in time yeah like we see all the people that have that problem the whole film yeah. <laughs> like much less in real life yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah no, totally um and i also wonder how much there is an aspect to that too of her her training herself of her yeah. You know, creating that mental discipline in herself, which then you know, gives her this personality. Well, you see some of the team, like the specifically the male researcher and the female mm. researcher, and the females talking on a on a phone that's her shoe. Yeah, well, and the other dudes just wandering down the hall, going, "Ah, you know, we're going <laughs> off to do whatever." <laughs> it's like. Yeah, you know, they make the point of saying it's like here are people that were on the research team that have had experience with this machine, mm. and yet they they they've just lost touch with mm. how reality works, and they're just mm. gone. Yeah, and it's like she's obviously yeah, taking the time to focus in on mm. how that works. Mm. Well, she takes the time, and she set head set i mean when you watch her going under for the first time as herself on the bed on the bed and you know putting the actual mini on because mm -hmm. previously she hasn't been she tells the other doctor you know hey be sure to set up the protocol to get me out so she has a lot of knowledge of this she has as much knowledge of it as the editor does 
Okay. So she and, and and she has spent so much time into it that she's able to, as we've been talking, as you all have been talking about, able to separate herself but still be the same thing until yeah. at the end of the, the end of the movie when Paprika turns around to her and says, "What makes you think you're not part of me?" Mm, oh, yeah. come on. You know. So you know how much control of this do do you have until it's it's really about um, denial of mm -hmm. what's what's what your dreams are, are are denying or what you're denying yourself that your dreams are trying to say no no no, no. this is what you want this yeah is what you need. yeah mm -hmm. um what, what is the the saying um uh do i contradict myself very well i contradict myself i contain multitudes you know we 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 have lots of conflicting desires and interests and so forth and some of them react on some of them we don't and so, uh, yeah, I, I love that aspect of the film. That there's a, a question of, um, uh, you know, how much are we the product of our, of our uh, decisions and how much, how far can you go with those decisions before you've kind of gone way far away from your true self, so to speak, or your, right. you know, your, your inner desires. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Um, and then, of course, you have, because it's, it's, it's tone, uh, you, you have all this wonderful repeated symbolism <laughs> of, you know, uh, we have you know, that original sequence, and then the next thing is at a, uh, uh, an amusement park, which is kind of like a circus. So we're kind of back in that same kind of context. Um, yeah. And then trying to understand what's going on there. Um, uh, yeah, it's just, there's, I just, mm, there's, there's so much. Um, what are your thoughts in general about just sort of um, the I found myself at times when I was watching this movie feeling um, sometimes lost in kind of a frustrating way in terms of you know when is she paprika when is she not when is she you know all that kind of stuff and it would event I would eventually be able to figure it out, but like there are times when like she turns around and it's like, oh, it's no, it's not. It's, okay, gotcha. Um, and I I found that in the moment frustrating. Um, did you guys have that reaction at all? No, because uh, but I understand why you would, uh, why anyone. Would. But when you um, <laughs> when you watch the which you go a lot. You come to expect one one the one constant um, even the self imposed rules that he makes within the movie are broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every single time. Paranoia yeah. or is a series paranoia agent, perfect blue, whatever this this one. So and this one is allowed to break it break its own rules, which people go no 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 no. The dream logic exists because this is what we set up in the beginning of of the, the movie. And so the movie sets things up to sets you up a construct of which you go, okay. So so we kind of think we might be in reality here, and this might be the dream. We understand that these two people are one, and but ba da ba da ba. And then by the end of the movie, it's all just like, you know. <laughs> well, and, that is dream logic. But that's, it's all black. But that's, oh, well, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Is that Satoshi Kon is like going. If you think you know what dream logic is, here let me throw the giant doll that's decimating downtown Tokyo, <laughs> and screaming and sounding like Ayaka from Tenchi Moyo screeching in Tenchi's ear, <laughs> you know, and clawing so, its way but, through but, buildings. Well, the right, yeah, but but that's but that's the whole point is that it's like all the rules are broken at this point because it that that's the only logic of dreams is that there is no logic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there is no such thing as a logical dreams. Yeah, and I think the first time I watched it, I sp <laughs> I spent a lot of time going, uh, uh, okay, well, that's no, no, uh, okay, huh? Mm -hmm. This time around, <laughs> yeah, I you know second second flush with it, I'm just kind of like, I'm just gonna look at the imagery, <laughs> look at all, look yeah. the depth yeah. of the dolls that are in there, like. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular thing that I'm seeing in the when yeah. Doctor Shima is like riding on the palakin and he's just mm -hmm. sort of surrounded by dolls? I'm like, is there any specific doll that I'm supposed to look at that it's so representational of something? Mm -hmm. um, 
like when when uh, Paprika shows up as the woodcutter's daughter, mm. the little, and she's got like little bun hair and dark mm. hair. Right. I'm like, okay, that's a that's a reference to like a classic story of some sort that I'm not particularly aware of. Mm-hmm. I don't know the significance that that image. Yep. Like, I don't know the significance of Paprika's doll when she the one that's right mm. before that one. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Or Homura when he shows up as that doll, mm-hmm. like I don't know the right. cultural and and mythological elements of any of these things. Like, yeah. is she supposed to be Anne of Green Gables with that kind of European bonnet? Mm-hmm. And stuff? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, a lot more time yeah. I could spend looking at what was on in the background this time around, and then just, you know, again I've said before, letting it wash over me for the other stuff that confused the living heck. Out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... Well, it's, it's one of the things that the Satoshi Kon kind of emphasizes in a lot of his works is that, you know, not only are the, you know, Steve, as you say, the, you know, the rules can be broken. This isn't real anyway. Like, it's, it's all ink and paint. Right. <laughs> right. So it's, yeah. You can do whatever you want, really. Um, Although, John, I will have to say, when you said, well, I was going to focus on the imagery, the, thing, the first thing I, my mind just jumped to was back in the, the crowd comes down rushing at, at the detective stuck in the cage and then you yeah. realize oh it's all his own face on there oh, <laughs> oh, oh no 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 well, this is yeah. one of the it's like oh what's up with your psyche <laughs> yeah um, well and you know this is also a movie being made by somebody kind of at the height of their powers too and at the at with a lot of budget you know Right. Uh, we, we we all are going back watching Puppet Blue and realizing, oh, there's like, they're squeezing every frame they can out of their their staff here. This is not that. This is very clearly we can just pour visuals onto the screen here. Well, the um, night parade alone. Yeah. You could have. Yeah. Blended some that of the characters deep. in the back to just be kind of a smear of color and stuff. Mm-hmm. But no, there is continuity and individuality mm-hmm. in every movement of the night parade. Yep. Where it's just like, wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, that's you. Yeah. Kudos on y'all for drawing all of that crap. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And constantly drawing it forward. And, and, and like, it, damn. Yeah. And, you know, this is not CGI. Uh, you know, Again, it's clearly cool. hand drawn. Yeah. So so there's the storyboard meeting when that is announced. Okay, you're going to be doing this, and the whole all the animators just go. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're not going to see me for three months. Mm-hmm. Yep. Exactly. Now I want all you folks to get out there, start animating, and earn your three seventy five uh, an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> We're getting a raise. Um, three dollars and seventy five cents. Oh, don't go crazy. Right. I'm only talking about three hundred and seventy five yen an hour. Mm. Don't don't go nuts on me. Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. No, it's it is it is nuts. Um, it's one of the reasons that makes paprika so bittersweet. Is thinking, oh, what more could we gotten out of this man? Um, you know, given this 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 depth of complexity. Um, and you see that too in a lot of the the, uh, the littler things too, of, of um, even just like the smaller images, uh, the smaller moments. I'm trying to find some here, um, but like th- there's um, actually yeah the, uh, the 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 bar scene. Um, I love how Cone is able to to love do. The, these. I love the bar scenes. Yeah, um, you know they're, they're these. Can you say shining? Cl- <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like the first thing that came to my mind. I watched the bar scene. I'm like, oh, something terrible, weird's gonna happen here. <laughs> Um, and it's great. So there are, good. There are so many things about the bar about in in this movie is is that first of all, that is a a prototypical Japanese. Mm-hmm. Movie, so that's that's what they look like. It's they're compact. They're they're mm-hmm. kind of like that. And, it's know, a kaya. The you know the uniforms and everything. And the yeah, and the and the glasses when they take the time to show you the glasses and you notice that the ice is rounded, yeah, in there that's a thing. That's mm-hmm. and so like you know a Japanese whiskey bar they'll sit you down, and they will bring out the equipment to take a block of ice and turn it into a ball and put it in there and then pour your whiskey in. It's about five. It's just amazing that they would go that far into that detail. And then the fact that this is kind of like Paprika's and the detectives, who by the way is probably one of my favorite characters in all of anime. Really? I don't know why, but he is. 
and yeah, and um, I don't know what it is that, that that I enjoy about them, but I just really like them a lot. And but you know that's kind of like their date place or their you know their meeting place and all that. And one of the first times that I saw the movie, and when she brings out the card, he goes, "Where can I see you again?" She brings out the card, and there's the email address on there. Mm-hmm. And that email address used to be a BBS board. Oh, interesting. That was related to to the movie. Wow. That became a blog forum. It's now shut down, but it became a blog forum for people who enjoyed the movie to come through. And then it became something that Satoshi Kon said this to be something that people, rising talent, can use to get together and communicate with. Mm-hmm. And that was very short lived. Wow. It only lasted like a year. Mm-hmm. And uh, but that was actually a thing. So now when you type that in, it takes you to a YouTube channel. Yes, it does. <laughs> because I did the same thing. A whole bunch of, type it in. Yeah, it, yeah. It takes you. It takes you to a, a YouTube channel where it's new voice actors and actresses, mm-hmm. and they they in in Japan they kind of introduce each other and it's kind of neat. Yeah. That's really but cool. Originally, that was a th- thing. Wow, that was a thing. Wow, that's nuts. They do it insert something in the movie that actually works and goes somewhere. Like that's yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> lots of lots of potential for bad stuff there. Well, um, I mean, think about the Simpsons. There is a, there's an episode where Homer is saying something about his email address, mm. and he's like Chunky Lover fifty three at AOL dot com. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. That's Chunky. Lo- and I'm like, <laughs> that just yeah. got a hundred billion emails mm. homer is that you mm. you're like uh-huh Here yeah. We go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah um which is why you have five 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 numbers in exactly uh, movies yeah eight six seven five three oh nine oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. yep 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 eight oh nine uh, oh damn it johnny two-tone <laughs> in your head now yep um what was that what was that yeah thank you and then the, um, as you say, the movie takes a turn, you know, and it just, it just starts getting weird. It's a hard left. It's a hard left. <laughs> like, whoa. Um, yeah, the whole butterfly, her um, thing, and the coming out of the chrysalis of the body, which yeah. I will, I will put on there is one of the creepiest moments in, creepiest visuals in anime, when like her body is, you know, opening out and she's coming out of it. Yeah, um, fantastic. Wonderful. I mean, just the animation of his hand mm-hmm. into her abdomen and yeah. then running yeah. up her up her mm-hmm. skin. Mm-hmm. It's just like that was wow. Yeah. <laughs> that was so mm-hmm. amazing animation. That, that was, it well, fe- it gave that, you a tactile sense, like just the the that, that was the a Cronenberg wish and slide yeah, totally. where it's like I think I'm betting that's a more moto moto moment. Like Koji Morimoto that we talked about before, okay. uh, the animator who does all the 3D stuff, who does yeah. Attention Forever stuff. Yeah, that so the like hand the wrapping around. Yeah, him. I bet that's him. Oh, because I mean, yeah. it just you could feel, I could feel mm. the push and squish, and it's just mm-hmm. like, oh wow. <laughs> yeah, um, that's and, an uncomfortable feeling. <laughs> and let's not like around the bush, <laughs> if you will. You know, there is definitely a physical shall we say, sexual element to this scene. I don't think you should. You, I don't oh, think yeah. you have to beat around the bush for that one. <laughs> like, really obvious where this was going no. to go mm-hmm. if uh, if the Lord of Dreams didn't show up and inter- mm-hmm. you know, have, uh, have violate us, interrupt us. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, uh, down to the tentacles. Like, yeah. okay, Cone, you went there. All right, gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll be it brief, but wow, yeah, mm-hmm. that was... definitely there. Hmm. Um, yeah, the blue butterflies. What is the representation of the blue butterflies? By the way, I have not looked that up. Um, as I understand it, it's a memory. Butterflies are okay. a, a symbol of memory. Well, I've seen blue butterflies before. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's from Triple X Holic. Okay. Mm-hmm. That blue butterflies occur in that. Mm-hmm. And it's, mm-hmm. I've seen it some other places too, where something's something weird is going on, yeah. and a blue butterfly goes by, and it's like yeah. specifically blue, not yellow, mm-hmm. not red, mm-hmm. not purple, blue. Mm-hmm. And it's like, hmm, okay, mm-hmm. I don't know yeah. what that is, but it's, I'm getting signals. Don't okay. know what they are. Right. <laughs> um, 
yeah. Um, and then, like I said, movie takes that hard left. Um, and this is the point where it's like, I don't, there's not much that I can kind of describe at this point because it just becomes this whole <laughs> crazy tumble of imagery and folks kind of trying to, to um, kind of swim through this, this mass of dream imagery that's constantly yeah. flooding through there. Um, including the scene at the end that I, again, I can't show you, as you were talking about the, the, um, uh, earlier, um, yeah. where uh, uh, she, let's just say she, she grows from a, a baby to an adult woman. Um, and yeah. it's, it's, a, it's an odd moment, because I remember watching that and going, wow, like, why? Like, what are they do? Oh, maturity, right. Like, the whole thing is about being a mature person and right. how that kind of gets you something that's there. But, like, it's, boy, it's on, it's on screen for a long time. It's like, mm. Well, it took a while to, to, to piece that together. Like, she's consuming the dreams. And mm. it's like, okay. Mm. So are you referencing the fact that as you start small, you have these mm. wild and grandiose dreams? I'm going to be a, a, a police officer. I'm going to be yeah. a fireman. I'm going to be a spaceman. Mm-hmm. And that literally the process of maturing is that you consume the dreams that you had as youth Mm -hmm. and that they Mm -hmm. sort of are digested and go away so that by the time you mature, it's a kind of a, I was like, it's gotta be a horrible message because by the time (laughs) she matures entirely into the full form adult, Mm -hmm. she has consumed all the dream master. Mm. So literally, she has consumed and destroyed dreams to become an adult. I'm like, that can't yeah. be the message, yeah, dude. I, I don't think That's a that. horrible <laughs> message. I, yeah. No, I, As I, you I, grow up, you have no dreams because your life is crap. Oh, no. Kill yeah. your dream. <laughs> yeah, like, no, no, that, no, can't no. Be the, that can't be the message. Like, no. I, no. I, I, I think the message is processing, right? It's, it's you have your dreams. That's great. What are you doing with them? Right. What are they right. telling you? And, you know, what should you, how should you act on with those? And to be clear, I'm not saying you should act on all your dreams. Um, that's not the way dreams work. Uh, but, but that's what Hollywood thrives on, bro. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you start in Hollywood. Um, Everybody who serves <laughs> tables and washes cars, everyone's a star. Exactly. It's um, Hollywood. But yeah, this, you know, <laughs> this is a, a, a film that's very much that meditation on what is um, what does it mean to be a together adult, right, mm-hmm. if you will? Um, and I felt it was the idea that you have dreams and that's great, um, but you also need to put those in a an effective perspective, right. and um, and then act on those appropriately, you know, and and be able to have both the well, and in, in this case, you know, you have your your um, profession, which you can be very effective and good at, and you have your playtime, you know, where you can kind of let that, right. that out, and you know, have, whatever you need to do to satisfy those various parts of your, your personality. Right. Which I think, was, as we discussed earlier, you know, Dr. Chiba, she, she is, you know, there's a reason why she grows up to be the, the consumer of the dream master, mm. is that she is... You know, despite whatever her own psychosis in the in the background we never learn of, she is able to have her dream and segue from the wild fantasy to the reality, and she's able to maintain that in a way. So her consumption of the out of control mm-hmm. to bring it under order yeah. makes makes sense. But you know, <laughs> who knows? Well, there was an interesting <laughs> comment. There was an interesting comment during the movie where she and Paprika are talking, or I think it's she and, and Paprika, mm-hmm. and, and Paprika is, is like, how are you doing? And she makes the comment of going, I haven't looked at my own dreams in a long time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, then one of the things that she, you know, towards the end of it, as she's looking at, um, you know, <clears throat> the, the, oh, what's his name again? Takoiti? Tokita. Cody? Um, Tokita. Okay, Tokita? Yeah. Tokita. And, you know, she's just like, okay, I have to look at this. I mean, and I accept it and, and just embrace it, which is, you know, 
wanting to be with him, being, you know, loving him. And just, you know, and then as she, as they, she pops into him, it was almost as if they were merging their dreams and what comes out is their combined dream. And there's no room for the dream master in here. So, because that's going to destroy whatever they're trying to build. It's evil, I guess. And that's, you know, and then of course, like you, I can't really explain why she's going from child to, to maturity. And then, then there's that whole thing. You're just like, going, I'm just going to accept that she's, Doing away with the dream master. <laughs> because of, that, that's, they're winning. That's, all, that's yeah. the yeah. important issue here. They're winning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're winning. Well, share. They're winning. <laughs> well, one of the things I, I, you know, and maybe it bears a third watching, mm-hmm. is they were talking about Homura and Homura's use of the DC Mini. And you see the side of Homura's face where the DC Mini is under his skin mm-hmm. and it's moving. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's never... Th- nobody like explains like that's not that's not the reality reality that's mm-hmm. like it's kind of segueing into the dream that what they're seeing isn't the dc mini actually mm-hmm. attached and inside him oh. that that's impossible it's just a piece of technology mm-hmm. it's not like hey we discover this alien dna let's make a thing oh no it's merged with you right that's never really addressed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just that, oh, Homura had so much contact with this as well that his psyche kind of got blended into things. And mm. then you see the things moving around. It's like, so is that Homura's, like, dream of this, like, this right. thing's now controlling him? Mm-hmm. And this is something, and we're seeing as an external observer mm-hmm. Homura's dream, and that's what's telling us that the world is merging. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that, more, exp- more exposition on yeah. that specific moment. That was my interpretation, is that we're, we're seeing a, kind of a symbol of what this has become for him. Yeah. But again, I think it's one of those things where Cone is like, <laughs> like I, you know, I'm putting these visuals in there for you all to, to play around with and experiment with. Like, I'm not going to tell you. You know, I'm, I'm not going to give you that definitive thing. I, I, I think that panel would be so, so frustrating with him up there. We all ask, so what did this mean? And he'll just go, yes. <laughs> How do you no! feel that it should mean? <laughs> so, f- funny side note, I've been reading uh, interviews with, with Hayao Miyazaki this week, and um, he was asked at one point, um, um, what is Totoro? Like, is it, you know, is it a forest god? Is it a spirit? Is it, you know, what, what exactly is it? And he laughs. A chipmunk. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and he laughs and says, mm-hmm. I can only answer that with it's Totoro because otherwise people are going to get so mad. <laughs> like, like, you know, there, there, there's, <laughs> there's no answer to that that's going to satisfy people, right? right? Like, even if he says, well, I saw it as this, it's just, it's, it is what it is. It's fine, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, I, I think it's kind of like that where it's like, Cone's interpretation almost isn't important in this movie. And to be clear, I, I think. Understanding creators' intent helps to better explicate, explicate movies. Um, like I think it's, it's an important, useful thing. But it's, I think in a, in a film like this, especially, Cohen is just kind of like, "Have at it, just have fun with it." Um, yeah, I'm not trying to be representational, quite clearly. Yeah. Well, from like what we discussed about Lane, yeah, it's some of the viewing is in what you yourself take from the imagery. Yeah. And sometimes that's the absolute point. Like they've got an internal dialogue. You know, there, there's an internal thing that's going on there. And that imagery to the creator is important in what it can evoke. Yeah. And so that as people go off on their, their tangents, yep. you can sit back <laughs> and have a good laugh. <laughs> yeah. Um, Miyazaki actually talked about that where he said, um, did that, not to get off topic, but Princess Mononoke was meant to be this exploration of what Muromachi era um, like iron workers were like with a fantastic element obviously he said but then there are no iron there were no iron forges anywhere like that in in history I just really liked the image of a giant forge so I stuck it in there <laughs> you know so he's like yeah yeah uh, uh, just take what you have you know uh, right um, it's it's a it's just, it's it's art it's creative license yeah. I'm doing things over here. You guys worry about what you how you want to see it. Right, yeah, <laughs> like, pretty much. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, no, it's it's um, it's interesting, and one of the things that I also find interesting about the, about this movie too is that that um, like we were saying before, which we see here in the ending, that uncertainty with Dr. Chiba and and how she should behave and do this, um, and how she's like you know she sees Paprika and she's like, I, you're doing a thi- it's, mm, mm. and which is very human. Right, we have right. those misgivings, and it's good to have those misgivings. Right, it's not like, you know, oh my gosh, it makes her a, a bad person. It's not like she's working through stuff too, right. um, and so she's allowed to kind of move forward despite uncertainty, uh, which is cool. Um, well, it's also interesting to see that Paprika is the is the uninhibited element that Chiba wants to embrace. She wants to embrace Tokita. In the in the way that she yeah. likes him, but he is a coworker. He is this guy working on this important thing for this, you know, for the project. And Paprika ha- would have no problem, you know, yeah. the way that mm-hmm. she, way that Paprika in, interacts with uh, Konakawa. She's very close to him. She's very mm-hmm. willing to touch him. She's very willing to be in the present moment with him. Yeah. And, she but you know and you see that at the end of the film where it's like she's just so struggling to integrate some of that freedom that paprika represents mm-hmm. into her demeanor to get some place where she wants to be mm-hmm. you know and it's just like yeah. oh, that, that's that's nice it's also cool because like i was just noticing in this shot you know one of the things you'd often have in this this thing is um uh you know one character would be in the dark one character would be in the light and that would be the thing, but no, like here, like Paprika's in the dark. Like <laughs> she's she is the shadow side of this character in this moment. Um, and Kona's not saying yet. No, this isn't a good versus bad. This is a choice A, choice B. You know, now you want more B than A. Well, that's a, right. a, a place you have to go. Um, yeah, yeah. While poor while poor Chief Shiba is back there patting his head, <laughs> <laughs> he's had a rough day. <laughs> Interesting character. Though. <laughs> uh, well, I just love the fact that he goes absolutely bonkers when they're having a meeting with the with the chairman, <laughs> and he starts screaming, runs out the window, and he's like, "Yeah!" <laughs> <laughs> First time I saw that, I'm like, "What did I miss? Something?" <laughs> he was like having a totally rational conversation, <laughs> and he just goes completely left field. I'm like, "Is that what that? What's happening?" <laughs> I, I would put money that that is based on a real person that Satoshi Kon knows in real life. Oh, it's gotta be. <laughs> or the author, original author. He's, he's um, very lovingly crafted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think one of the other interesting questions about the movie is, again, I haven't, I haven't read the original story. I wonder how faithful it is. Yeah, I wonder. I yeah, I mean, they obviously had the budget to do it to, you know, uh, a point where the story is well matched to the film. But... Yeah, and I'm sure it's not one to one, right? No, right. No, nothing ever is. And I know, like, um, I remember Cohn saying at one point that he he was fortunately at a point where in his life where he didn't feel a need to, you know, exactly match the thing he was adapting. But I, as I recall, like he talked to the author fairly extensively and they were pretty simpatico with like the the approach um but yeah it's it's an interesting interesting question i wonder i wonder how um how much is kind of compressed down because it does feel like the a lot of the relationships here would benefit from uh, like you were saying john before a little more explanation a little bit more sort of delving into the details of what was going on but homura homura and tokida are great friends Mm -hmm. from like what how just yeah. in the working working association obviously they share some similar love of dolls and and you know geeky nerdy otaku kind of stuff is mm. that so were they truly friends were they childhood friends there's yeah. pictures of them together mm, mm-hmm. so w- why yeah. uh, you know it'd be great to know and then have a, a little more depth into like why did homura get influenced by the chairman to mm-hmm. secret away the DC Mini and to do these things. What was, mm-hmm. what was the motivation there? Purely jealousy? Why jealousy? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, couldn't he... You know, regardless, there's yeah. so much more to explore there. Yeah. We don't have the chance. Mm-hmm. I think it was also smart in this movie to... If you're going to cut anything, 
in a mo- in a story like this, cut the exposition and focus on the wild visuals. <laughs> I, I I you know of all things in this kind of movie, I would rather see the the craziness as opposed to well, as you know, Bob, you know, not that it would be that bad, but yeah. Well, hey, it worked for the Transformers franchise, so why oh. couldn't it work here? <laughs> Story? We don't need no stinking story. More robots. More explosions. It's all good. This is not about thinking. This is about watching. (laughs) Those movies hurt me. Never seen a one. (laughs) Those movies beat me up in an alleyway and took my wallet. Oh, feels that way sometimes. Um, Oh man. Um, But yeah, um, it's. It's a ride. It's definitely a ride of a film. Um, any other thoughts anyone wanted to, to get across? And I, I should point out, like, there are other elements of this movie that I'm, I'm not explaining, partly because I'm having trouble remembering all of them. Um, uh, because it, 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 it does get a bit of a blur. Um, but also because, like, because this is such a visual movie, because there's so much going on, there's yeah. a lot where they can't kind of really say, well, in this one scene where there's this one thing going on here, what does that mean? Where they, they spend the rest of the, the day. Well, I thought it was very interesting that you got with um, with Konakawa, you got, you know, some greater depth into why he has this recurring circus fantasy, why his his dreams show up like they do the hallway guy getting shot or going down the hallway. You know, things kind of come around to really kind of an unexpected lost opportunities and Mm -hmm. and drifting of your of your dream path Mm -hmm. that was like for all his mental imagery was far more of a mundane thing than like (laughs) i ever i expected like oh my gosh the guy in the hallway he's at fault and this is like this is something he did and he's living with such great regret it's like no, he just regrets like a really mundane career choice, mm-hmm. and it's so huge <laughs> in his psyche. Um, you know, I mean, that's yeah. that was at least interesting to see how that played out to the end of the of the story with so obviously much more going on. <laughs> right. You know, the whole DC mini thing is like <laughs> the Dream Master himself is controlling everyone's dreams. That's a huge story, and yet here. Let's focus on this guy and his career choices. Mm. You know, it's like that's a sort of interesting, you know, juxtaposition yeah. of something mundane and something globally catastrophic. Like, oh, cool. and yeah, like you say, it's it's kind of neat because that is a lot of what we worry about, right? Or like those mundane things. Most people don't have these massive dramatic things, and those yeah. are kind of most of our dreams. Yeah, Steve, it's like you? that funky. <sighs> I don't know how many times I've seen this movie like Perfect Blue. <clears throat> I've seen it way too many times. Um, it's 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 one of those things where oh. I almost just wanted to stay quiet through the whole thing because I just wanted to hear what you guys have to say because I've, I've seen it so I many times that. where I'm just kind of like going what's that? Perfect Blue. I saw Tokyo yeah, Godfather. I totally blue. missed yeah, the Perfect Blue yeah, Martin. Both perfect. Perfect, perfect Blue and Millennium Actors are playing in the yeah. theater. Yeah. So he, wow! So he yeah. dumped three titles: and, Perfect and, Blue, Millennium Actress, and Tokyo Godfathers yeah. into the marquees. Yeah, I wonder if Paranoid Agents in there somewhere. Oh, yeah. damn! That's yeah. funny. Is it good it's got to be in there somewhere. Yeah. Hey, look at the films. But, I, but I was going to say, is that, is that... <laughs> <laughs> maybe he knew he was going to die. But um, but the, the whole thing is, is 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 there's yeah. Hey. Um, but the, the, the whole movie is, uh, is for me is that I don't think that, um, and this is, this is just my opinion of it. Um, I don't think the dream has ended. Mm. Interesting. And at the end that, that it's still, still somebody's dream. Mm. And the reason why I say that is because the te- detective, I think it's still going on in his head. I think it's still still happening but that's just and and the only way the only thing i have to go on for that is the fact that he at towards the end he visits the bar again mm. right through through his laptop but they know who he is and he has a message from paprika so how can he be getting through this through the laptop if he's not drinking mm. so i think this whole thing is you know 
isn't just about his mundane choices, but I think it's all still there. Yeah. And still right. happening and it's still a trait. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. we never do have a resolution as to what happened to the DC Mini. Just because you you managed to defeat the Dream Master, right. <laughs> the DC Mini and the therapy machines, they didn't just go away. Mm-hmm. So, you know, depending on what the Foundation does without its chairman, yeah. you know, it presumably they're still doing research. They don't know the chairman's gone. Mm-hmm. So presumably the Foundation is still doing all of its thing. Well, and, you know, not to be too meta... But isn't this whole story of the DC Mini and all this kind of stuff and this this giant epic story very much like the kind of story you'd have in a dream? That he's right. just he made it all up as this fantastic, you know, yep. thing he was involved in. Who knows? No. <laughs> maybe there's no DC Mini, right? Maybe maybe yeah. it's all just part of his, his dream. His great fantasy that involves James Bondy kind of things. You've got James Bond gadgets. Yep. Mm-hmm. It, you know, what I mean, that you, I could easily see an argument for that. It's like, oh no, the DC Mini is just a gadget. It's Q. The fat, you know, yep. Tokita is Q. Yep. Q has come up with a gadget. This gadget allows people to go into dreams. And this police officer, this is his grand fantasy. He's like the super cop, and he could go into criminal dreams, and he could catch people, and it's like. Yeah, you know, that easily could be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Cone. You're very much missed. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, just such a, a great movie. And remarkably short. You know, it's just barely an hour and a half. Right. Um, Although, would you, if it was just like a three hour, like, major, major sit down, oh, I'd, I'd I'm not there. sure you. Oh, I'd God. I'm not sure I can take it after you, about two hours. I'd be like, ah. The paranoid agent is what, you know, basically <laughs> four hours of Satoshi Kone, you know. <laughs> Five hours. Yeah. Something. That's a lot. It, it <laughs> That's a lot of Kone. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and it's Kone Imagine watching movie. Perfect Blue for three hours. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> need a lot of popcorn and i'd need steve the uh the alcohol delivery popcorn. man <laughs> like, popcorn popcorn and, and <laughs> yeah. lots of brown ale <laughs> gosh yeah i don't know what what food pairs well with satoshi Kone movies um insanity <laughs> oh, i know insanity I'm thinking madness uh, yeah that's the thing though his, his movies are the you know there's always a thread going through. Um, you know, it's, it's never random. Um, it's never qu- It's just, it's intense. How about a Chateau say, How about a Chateaubriand and a fine Bordeaux? Sure. To enjoy the savory flavors and the and the slightly licorice-ness of the <laughs> okay of, of the gotcha. wine to go with it, so that it chills you out in just the right place and time. I like it. Cool, cool. Rich, satisfying. Have a nice and... smoky, a smoking whiskey and scotch over over in a highball with nice rounded uh, glass. Oh, or, yeah. sorry, there we go. Nice, to open nice to ball. open the nose. Yes. And then at the end of it, and. Yes, and then after 80, 90 minutes of this, and you go, go, and make you small liquor because you're angry. <laughs> I've made it through the other side. Time for some Colt 45. <laughs> Sir, and your the... Colt 45 is prepared. Would you prefer it in the brown paper bag or just in your hand? Oh, brown paper, please. Exactly. Please. please. But, uh... You're sophisticated. We're watching some fish. Yeah. Pinky's up. <laughs> all right um that will i think do it for us um we're gonna be right back in a few minutes to talk about anime news and other stuff going on Ooh. so we will see you in just Ooh. a moment